When it comes to choosing the right parts for your next gaming PC build, selecting the right motherboard can be the most confusing step of all. With different sockets, chipsets, form factors, features and connectivity, how do you go about choosing the right board for your next build? Well in this video I'll be covering everything that you need to know, including how much you really need to spend, the features that matter and those that plainly don't, and even how a motherboard is made thanks to a recent tour of MSI's factory in Shenzhen, China. Let's do this! This video is going to be split down into a few key sections, so feel free to navigate through the video as you wish. Now in many ways you could consider the motherboard to be the skeleton of your gaming PC, and having a good skeleton is of course important, but the motherboard is also going to determine what you can install into the build. Now the first and most obvious example of that would be the CPU. Depending on the CPU socket your board has depends on the CPUs it will support. X670 and X870 of course support AMD's Ryzen 7 and 9000 lineup, while this new Z890 board with Intel's latest LGA socket supports their cool ultra CPUs. Fundamentally that gives us two categories of motherboard, AMD and Intel. Now at the point we're at at the moment there isn't a great deal of difference between the two and as you can see from these MSI boards the fundamentals are pretty much the same. Now once you've distilled down what socket you need based on the CPU you've chosen you'll then look at a thing called chipsets. Now the chipset is a little component which sits around here on AMD and Intel boards and the chipset determines the kind of features available on the motherboard. Intel's high-end chipset is their Z lineup, moving down to the B series towards the bottom, and the H series at the very low end. AMD have the X series chipsets at the top, B series in the middle, and A series towards the bottom. Big differences include the support for overclocking on the CPU and memory on the top end Intel and top end and mid range AMD chipsets. Intel's lower end chipsets are only going to support overclocking of the RAM. You'll also find that higher end chipset boards have more VRM power power phases, that's what's going to deliver the power from your CPU power port to the CPU and allow for better overclocking or in the case of high-end CPUs just better higher power delivery when those chips are pulling their maximum load and they're also going to determine the number of PCIe lanes available to the system. Don't confuse these PCIe lanes with the actual physical X16 slots on the motherboard because while these are powered by the PCIe bandwidth these PCIe lanes are also used to control things like the NVMe drives and can determine things like the number of high-speed USB 4 or Thunderbolt ports available at your disposal. Now you might be thinking then that spending more on the motherboard is a fast track to get better performance, but that isn't always true. Yes it can help with better CPU overclocking, better memory support, and that can all in turn lead to higher levels of performance. At the lower end, spending a lot of money on a high-end board can be a bit of a waste, as that cash is often better ploughed into other components like a CPU or GPU upgrade. The chipset though is going to determine some of the major features available to you. So what then are those features? What should you look out for? Well the number of physical PCI slots on the board is one. Most gamers just need the one for a single graphics card. But if you're building a PC for heavy high-end rendering workloads you might want a second. Or you might want more options for network expansion cards, sound cards or high-end capture cards at a later date. You'll also want to consider the I.O. on the rear. How many USB ports are there? How many Ethernet ports and what speed do these operate at? What's the onboard Wi-Fi like? Does it have Thunderbolt? Is there an optical audio output. Now you may not need all of those things and only you will really know, but they're the kind of features you're going to get. Higher end boards also feature cool things like these Q-code displays. These allow for easy debugging by reporting error codes, so if you have an issue with system post you can see what that issue is. While again some of the higher end boards will actually have tallest features. This MSI Unify X is very high end and has a single heatsink which below reveals a number of fully tallest NVMe installation slots. And you can see how easy this is to pop back on, clips into place, nice Nice and simple. It's the same though, by the way, with this board here. Nice big M.2 heatsink that's going to make life a lot more simple. The speed of these slots is also important to note, primarily when it comes to SSDs. Some boards will only support Gen 4 NVMEs, some will support the much faster Gen 5, some will support a mix of both. So cross reference against the motherboard manufacturer's webpage to find out. One or two other things to point out is that some of the higher end boards will have physical power and reset switches on the board. Great again for debugging. You may also have things like auxiliary GPU power. This is potentially very useful for next-gen graphics cards. You might have a locking system that makes taking and removing the GPU that bit easier. And of course the aesthetics of the board, any RGB, the colour scheme can all make a big difference to what it is you're going to buy. Perhaps the thing that taught me the most though about motherboards was a recent trip where MSI invited me to their factory in Shenzhen, China to see how they make all of their latest motherboards. Alongside the trip, MSI kindly supplied me with a range of footage which I'm able to share with you and actually provide some
some really useful, insightful information for those of you looking to buy a motherboard. Now, as soon as I stepped into the factory, I was oh, kind of surprised how big it was. It might sound silly, but there were a large number of production lines, each making any single model of motherboard at any one time. And as I say as well, they can change this on a day by day or even change it at lunchtime if they want to switch from making the Unify X to a carbon from the morning to the afternoon. The process at the factory actually starts with a number of blank PCBs that arrive at the factory and are first applied with a layer of solder on each side. As you can see, the board starts to appear more and more dense and more and more printed as the outline of CPU sockets, RAM DIMMs and connectors take shape as the board progresses further through the production line. It is these points that the power connections, DIMM slots and PCI slots will all connect to as the board becomes more and more built. You then see reels of capacitors, fan headers, RGB headers and even the IO start to be installed on the motherboard. These reels can contain thousands of each component as machines stamp them into place with just the right tension before having their solder joints applied by going through an oven at over 200 degrees Celsius. Pretty toasty. At all stages of the production line, MSI have a range of fancy cameras, sensors and AI tools to check that each stage has been completed successfully and we actually saw how they intervene whereby if there is a problem, an engineer or an operator can take the board out the line and try and remedy the issue. Connectors are placed on the motherboard via a combination of machines and people with high levels of automation throughout the whole factory. It was really cool seeing things like CPU power connectors being placed onto the board with each motherboard quickly starting to resemble more closely what you'd expect from the finished product. Much of the soldering on these components is done by machine as you can probably imagine and they even have a stage where the board is brushed on the bottom to remove excess solder and debris. MSI said that consumers want a clean motherboard and I've kind of never thought about that before. There were some really cool automated robotic arms too that I really geeked out about that pick the boards up, move them into the right places and machines which automatically screw to the right tension level for things like the CPU socket. Finally, the boards are equipped with their integrated rear IO shields, chipset heat sinks and even VRM cooling. Now this board is actually a Z890 Tomahawk board which was pretty interesting to see and is now with us here in the office. Throughout the whole tour, lots of us were trying to guess what the board was so I was quite pleased to see it be the Tomahawk towards the end. Perhaps one of the most interesting stages though was testing. As you can imagine, MSI were keen to stress how well they validate the boards and they actually had this jig with a built-in CPU, GPU and all various headers which they placed onto the board to check that everything was working A-OK. -okay. There were some other interesting things I saw too like a box shaking machine, an automated conveyor belt system that moved all the components around the factory and just generally was a really really interesting experience. And something that makes videos like this where I'm talking about how to pick a motherboard a lot easier to make. So thanks to MSI for the footage and thanks to Fly Me Over for your factory. Full geek out experience. How's it gone from PC builds to actually being in a motherboard factory is pretty nuts. But how should you go about picking a board? What should you look for? Now there's boards like this Unify board from MSI which are built for high end overclocking and if you're an enthusiast who wants a board like this, no offense, you probably know who you are. For most users though, you'll want to look at a board that prioritizes your use case. If you're going for an entry level system where you're better to pour more money into the GPU and CPU, go for a lower end B series chipset motherboard. But of the B series chipsets, make sure the one you're buying has a good IO and has better features than others at the price point. If you go in higher end for an i7 or Ryzen 7 tier CPU or above, boards like this MSI Carbon are a great shout. It's got nice quality of life features like the ability to easily remove the M.2 heat sinks, it's got good expandability and a strong IO that gives you, I don't want to use the word future proofing too loosely, but connectivity that yes you might not need now but you might feasibly need later on. And of course if you're on the high end you want to look at those top end motherboards but you may not need to spend that much money. For many people the top end boards are going to be useful for applications like video editing or rendering where you're importing lots of footage through the high speed ports at once. For a gaming build that's just not likely to be necessary. Now that brings me on to the final part of today's video which is well how much should you spend on a motherboard? And that well really depends on what you need. Now I hate watching a video and getting the advice which is like it depends because it's not, not useful. Now for a lower end build you want to be spending below $200 in my opinion for a Ryzen 5 Core Ultra 5 or i5 tier system. Move through to the higher end and spending $3,350 on a board is not a bad idea for those more powerful builds with the likes of say an RTX 4080 Super or the upcoming 5080. While those shopping on the top end will be spending five or even $600 on a board but you should only do this if it's got features you really need or if you've already maxed out everything else in the build and it's the only thing left to upgrade. So buying a motherboard then can be confusing and there is still a lot to consider but hopefully this video has made it a little easier and a big thank you again to MSI for flying me
me over to see their factory. It was an awesome experience and really helps when it comes to making videos just like this one. If you enjoyed today's video, get subscribed. Thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.